Let's build a popular editorial style layout using CSS Grid. It's going to be an article with components of different widths, where some of them extend beyond the content area. In the previous video, we've used max width and margin auto to create this layout, and some of you pointed out that it could also be done with the grid. But is it really better? Let's find out. Here's the layout that I'm talking about. Notice how some components extend beyond the content area. We have a medium width component, we have large width component, and we have a full with component. Today we'll build the exact same thing but we'll use CSS grid instead of margin auto and max and line size as we discussed in the previous video. But before we start let's look closely at the layout we're replicating. If I start resizing my screen from the largest viewport the large width component stays fixed at 1440 pixels until we hit 440 pixels plus the gutters in the viewport width, and then it starts shrinking. And we can observe the same behavior with the medium width component, where it stays at 960 pixels until we hit the viewport of 960 plus the gutters. And the same behavior applies to the content width. It stays at 640 until we hit 640 plus the gutters. I like this layout because it uses a screen space while the content stays at its max width until there is no more room and only then it starts shrinking. And this happens naturally with max inline size and normal flow because block elements take all the inline space by default. And there are no sudden jumps in width, it just works on any screen. So let's build the same thing with grid. Let's start with a simple version and pretend that we don't have medium, large and full width components. Here's the code from the previous video. I will link it down below. And let's start by just disabling the utility classes for now. So let's say we don't have medium, large and full width components. And if I save it, everything becomes the same width. Perfect. So now let's plan for how our grid layout will work. The idea is simple. We turn the content area into a grid and place each child element on its own track. So it will look something like this. We have the title on its own track. Then we have the intro paragraph on its own track. Then we have the metadata image. And then within each track, we'll have multiple columns. And our job will be just to place place the child element into a correct column. So which columns do we have? We have the gutter to make sure the content doesn't touch the edges of the screen on each side. Then we have our content area, which will have a default width. And then we have our flexible areas here, which are equal. Now let's turn that into CSS. So first of all, let me remove the styles I have here. And I will also uncomment this. And I'm going to remove the styles for each utility class. And now everything is full width and looks kind of broken. So let's start fixing it. Now let's turn the entire content area into a grid. And before we start writing styles, let's create a simple schema for ourselves so it's easy to visualize what we're actually building. So as we just drew on the screen, we'll have the gutter column come in first, then we'll have our flexible area. I'll mark it as triple uh, X for now. We'll discuss that in just a second. Then we have our default content width. Then we have our flexible area again. And then we have our gutter again. And what I also like to do, especially when the layouts become more complex, and this will become more complex very quickly, as you'll see, uh, I like to mark grid lines like this. Obviously not on every project, but it, it makes it easy to understand we, where exactly to place the elements later. And also the next engineer that will open this project will say thank you even if that engineer is you. What I also like to do for layouts like this, especially when they get complicated, is create a scoped variable for the width of each column. And I can do calculations for each column in the variable. And I'll define the variable for the gutter. If you watched the previous video, you'll know that I have my variables for the layout defined here. So I have the site gutter. It's just a separate file with uh, global variables for the project. So we have the gutter defined here like that. 
then we have our default column width and we also have a variable for that so we will use with content and now that we have our variables defined we can actually declare our columns so we can do that by saying grid template columns and then we just need to create our columns in here so what we'll do is let me make it full screen so it's easy to read we'll use our variables so gutter goes first then I'm just going to use zero for now. Then we'll go with our default variable. And then at the end, we'll have the gutter again. So let's talk a little bit about what's going to go inside this mysterious flexible column. You may have guessed already that we're going to use fraction units in this declaration. Fraction units are sort of like polite units that allow other columns that have defined width to take space first and then they distribute the rest so if we set one fraction on each side of the default column width we'll end up with flexible space that collapses all the way to zero until we hit a viewport where extra space is not needed there's one more gotcha we cannot uh, just declare the default value like this we want to make sure that we do min max zero and then declare the width of the column because otherwise we'll end up with horizontal scrolling on mobile devices so let's see what's going on right now and it looks broken because we have not placed child elements into a proper column so let's think for a second where the child elements should go that's where our grid lines will come in very handy so the default column should start at grid line number three and end on grid line number four we can simply use this rule here to say grid column and add three this will work as is because by default element spans for just one column but to be more explicit we can say grid three to four which means span from grid line three to grid line number four or we can say grid three minus three which will be accounting grid lines from the end so we'll count from this will be minus one minus two that's an ugly two but whatever minus three and so on so if we say grid column three minus three we'll end up with child elements placed exactly into our default column so let's save it and see if that actually worked yeah perfect so now that we have our grid set up let's think of the medium large and full width components and let's start with full width components first so i'm going to scroll down here where we have the full width component as you may have guessed already it's going to be very easy to place it into a proper column we just want to make sure that it spans from the very beginning of the grid till the very end or in other words from grid line number one to grid line number six or we can also say grid line number one to grid line number minus one and using minus one is slightly better because if we do that we don't care how many columns are inside our grid and you'll see later when we start adding more columns to accommodate for other components uh, the full width component will actually stay the same so all we have to do here and say grid column one minus one and if I save it and open our browser you'll see that the full width component is working again and now let's take care of medium and large width components okay so let's draw on the screen again to visualize what exactly we are going to build and how it's going to work i'm going to draw a grid around this image because if you remember this image is actually a medium width component so in our grid thus far we have the gutters on each side then we have our flexible area here then we have our default content width and that's it but if we want to make sure that this component stretches further we need to create another column like this here and same applies to large width components if we want to like if this was a large width component we just want to add another two columns here 
like that and make sure that the component stretches for uh, not just one, not just three, but four or five counts. And that's how this is going to work. That like That's the, the most basic idea. But the implementation is a little bit tricky. So let me delete this and update our schema here. So instead of, uh, I'm going to update that to one fraction. Uh, instead of having just gutter one fraction, default one fraction gutter, we'll insert two more columns between the flexible area and the default content width. So it's going to go like this. It's going to go large, then we'll have medium, default, medium again, large again, then we have the flexible area and the gutter. Now let's update the grid lines too. So we have five, six, now we have seven, eight, nine, and 10. Okay, so now that we have our grid lines, let's create the variables. So following the same pattern, I'm going to create a variable for medium and I'm going to assign it to one fraction as well. For now, that's a temporary value to make sure that the layout doesn't break when I update everything. And I'm going to do the same thing for large. Perfect. Now that we have our variable set up, I can update the declaration here. Let me zoom out a little bit. So it fits on the screen. So we go from flexible, we have the large column, and then we have the medium column like that. Then we have our medium column again, and then we have our large column. Perfect. That's a long declaration, but uh, it should work. Perfect. So now that we have our declaration, the last step is to update child elements. So as you can see now, they are spanning not from grid line number three to minus three, which would be actually large. They need to span from grid line number five to grid line number six, or in other words, from five to minus five. Okay, so for medium width, what do we do? We do four here to seven. And for large, we do three, eight, or three minus three. Perfect. So for medium, we have grid column four minus four and for large, we have three minus three. And the last thing we need to do to make this layout work again is calculate the values for our medium and large um, columns here, here and here. And it's not super straightforward. It took me some time to figure out because um, like we cannot simply reuse the global variables, right? Because the columns are overlapping. We need to calculate the values. And we also want to maintain that nice behavior where components stay at their max width until there's no more space. That's a, a little bit of a tricky layout, but bear with me, we'll make it work. The trick here is to do it in two phases. Let's pretend for a second that we don't need to style this layout for for mobile that we only need desktop styles in that case like it's actually pretty straightforward if we only need to style it like this we know this width it's the variable that we have in our global um, variables file and we also know this width that's also a global variable so all we have to do is take one variable subtract another and divide it by two so for medium we're going to take the value of our medium content width subtract the default content and we need to divide this by two. And obviously we also need to wrap this into a call function. Perfect. Now we can do the same for large, but instead of subtracting the default content width from medium content width, we're going to subtract content medium from content large. And if I save this, yeah, so the desktop works again. If I inspect the values here, we'll see that we have 964 medium width component, then we have 1440 for our large width component and our full width component remains the same because it's, uh, it's full width. Remember how I said that it's better to use one minus one because we don't care how many columns are there in the grid and that's exactly why it uh, still works. But there is an issue like we haven't styled this for mobile devices. If I start resizing the screen, obviously, like that's not the layout we're trying to build, right? Because the calculated value 
this value is too large for mobile. Let me switch to the finished version and see how this behaves. On mobile, let's think of like the things that we know on the viewport that is slightly smaller than 960 pixels, but still larger than default column. On this layout, we know the width of the default column. It still stays at 640. We know the gutters. And what we also know is that entry content is a component that is supposed to be used as the top level component. So it will always be the same width as the viewport. So we know that we have 100% here. So the calculation could be take 100%, subtract the default content width, subtract the gutters and divide by two. Let's implement that in CSS to make the layout work on mobile again. So I'm going to add another variable here. I'm just going to copy this and create another calculation. So I'll do it on multiple lines because it's slightly easier to comprehend. What we have so far is 100%. That's the width of the screen. Then we can subtract the default content width. Don't forget the minus sign. Then we can subtract the gutters like that. And if you remember math, we don't need any uh, um, parenthesis here because this will happen first before we do subtraction. So now that we have the 100% minus width of the content minus uh, double the side gutters, all we have to do is wrap this thing in parentheses and divide it by two. Perfect. Format the document and we can do the same thing for the large viewport as well. So I'm going to copy but instead of subtracting with content i'm going to subtract with content medium minus the side gutters perfect so if i like if i didn't make any typos which i often do this should work again uh, that's the finished version and that's our live website so it works again but if i start resizing like this, you'll notice that lay the layout breaks again. If you play with this long enough, as I did for this demo, you'll notice a very interesting observation. Like when we use the mobile value for this column, is too big for, for desktop. And it's the opposite for the value we'll calculate for desktop. So what this means is that to make this work, the only thing that we need to do is call this medium max and then, or we can call it medium desktop. That would be more descriptive, more semantically correct. And this we can call mobile. Uh, you know what, I actually like max and min because like when you use desktop, like what if you open this? on uh, iPad Pro that has a large screen. Like that makes this entire variable not super semantic. So let's use max and min here. And the last step is because now I've broken the, the, the variables, we no longer have uh, the large and what happened to my formatting here? Yeah, uh, now it's slightly better. I still prefer this on the same line. Yeah, I think prettier is going a little bit crazy. So let me refactor this a little bit. Okay, like that, I think. When prettier goes too crazy, it's less prettier, pun intended. So we're going to add medium like that. And then we'll use min function in CSS that's uh, going to use both values. So we'll just pick the, the smallest one from these two. Medium, and we'll do the same for large. Perfect. So now we're picking the minimum value out of the two we calculated. So if I didn't make any mistakes, that should make our layout work perfectly again. So if I resize the screen from, from large to small layout, we see how nicely our components scale. Let's try it with this one works perfectly and if I resize larger it still stays at 1440 and our full width component works nicely as well. But the big question is which approach is better, the grid approach or the approach we covered in the previous video? I think it depends. If your project only has centered content column and you have components that extend outside the content area and you don't have anything super complicated, I think grid doesn't make sense because look for yourself. On the left, I have the styles that we created for the grid layout. And on the right, we have the styles with margin and line auto and max and line size. Look how like 
how more compact it is and it behaves the same way. I think this is the case where using the cool thing and cool approach is not really worth it because arguably the styles on the right are easier to read, easier to maintain. With that said, if you have a layout that looks more like this, where the main column is slightly shifted to the left, where we have the sticky elements like this one that have to be semantically placed in the correct spot in the content, where we still have the large and medium content width that is centered, and we still have our full width, full width component. This is the prime example where I would go for grid any day. Let me know in the comments if you like to see how to build, how I built this layout, uh, because that felt a little bit out of the scope for this video. And let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.